I'm Nick Fire and welcome to Pocket News for Monday the 5th of September. Today on the show are packed packs and songs from the heart. Ooh, Barracuda. That's a song by heart. Hey Dad. All right, here's what's been making headlines. And with PAX West happening over in Seattle, we saw a whole lot of game. One of the big announcements which had been teased earlier in the week came from Gearbox. At their panel, they confirmed that Duke Nukem 3D was getting a remaster for modern platforms. Not only that, they actually brought back some of the original development team to craft an entirely new episode, which features eight new levels. Original designers, composers, and the voice, John St. John, who I refuse to believe is not a porn star. <laughs> All came back to ensure that the content truly captured 1996's crass stench. It's launching on the 11th of October for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. That was about the only fresh announcement from the floor, but there were a heap of extended gameplay clips and trailers. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare received a couple of trailers showing off the new multiplayer features. The biggest new addition appears to be the six class rigs that players choose to wear. The ability to pair these classes with different modification traits means there's going to be a lot of different ways to play. This appears to be more than just an expansion on the special weapons from Black Ops 3. You're going to be making choices that will drastically alter the gameplay for you. It's almost Overwatch in its class-based design. But it's not Overwatch. We're not gonna give it that. One of these trailers takes the time to explain a lot of the ins and outs of the rigs. It's worth watching if you intend on getting stuck into the new multiplayer mode. But if you like your murder simulators more old school, then the Modern Warfare Remaster is going to excite you. During the COD XP briefing, it was revealed that all 16 of the original Modern Warfare maps will be included in the remaster, instead of just 10 as they originally announced. It turns out there will be 10 maps available at launch and in classic, Activision style, the final six maps will be available as DLC in December. This Christmas, why not give a little back to Activision after they've taken from you so much. We saw other games too. There were three in-game hero trailers for For Honor, which showed off some nice animations and not a whole lot else. And Square Enix held a live stream of Final Fantasy XV and demoed the leading boy band's fight against a giant mechanical crab. There are trailers for all that stuff in the description below. Not a trailer for the next story though doesn't deserve it. The Steam and physical PC release of Quantum Break has been delayed. THQ Nordic announced that the launch would be pushed from the 14th of September to the 29th as there was, quote, additional time required for mastering and manufacturing. I'll tell you what, you go digital release and five minutes later you can't remember how to burn a disc? What is the world coming to? A superior digital only future, that's what. And Campo Santo agrees. They've just announced they're on track to release their acclaimed first-person adventure Firewatch on Xbox One on the 21st of September. It's safe to say this digital-only release will not be affected by a mastering and manufacturing delay. And finally, a Pocket-exclusive Pocketeer, Lachlan Smith, brings us this story on when the Battlefield 1 beta will end. Hit us, Lachlan! No, you're reading it. One second, Lachlan. According to an offline notification from EA, the Battlefield open beta will be playable up until the 8th of September. Smith stumbled upon this notification when he turned his Xbox One console on and it opened up directly to the Battlefield One app. The console standby mode kept the game running but managed to lose connection to the Battlefield servers, causing the error message to pop up. EA is yet to officially announce an end date for the beta, but it looks like they may have one in place. However, EA are no strangers to extending betas in order to get the data thereafter. So maybe they haven't made a formal announcement because they're not sure when they'll get what they actually need. But stay tuned to Lachlan Smith for more, and stay tuned to us for this It's Thing of the Day. Also, Lachlan, would it kill you to send in a video? I'm doing all the work here. Nick boy, what you got for us? It's thing of the day. <laughs> Don't look at me. Ah! 
Pain inspires art. Chris Conn the Don was so emotionally damaged by the recent nerf of Overwatch's Genji that he was moved to write a song about it. In the style of I miss the old Kanye. I even had the Nihon ski and I thought I was Genji. What if Blizzard made a patch about Genji? Call him Mr. All Genji. Man, that'd be so Genji. That's all it was, Genji. We still love Genji and I love you like Genji loves Genji. <laughs> It's thing of the day. <laughs> Don't look at me. All right, that is it for Pocket News today. My Pocket Tears this afternoon. Check out our YouTube channel for This Week in Games, where, of course, I will let you know what's happening this week in games. And if this week you want people to game with, then check out the Pocket Tears Facebook group and Steam group. There are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing of the day graphic was made by Lachlan Russell. A day of Lachlan's. If you've made a thing, please send it in. Until we next assemble my Pocket Tears, Nick Boyer. Mwah! Only one of those Lachlan sent in a video though, didn't they? Lachlan Smith. <laughs> if that is your real name. August is always an interesting time for game releases. It's not as barren as July, but it is just before the big holiday push. However, there were a couple of total surprises, a couple of safe picks, and a murder simulator. So first up, next pick number one, abduction.